Hey everyone, this is your Federico here and today we are taking on a challenge. We are going to recreate this touch designing tutorial from a YouTuber called Nunes Image and this is about creating a um, simple video mixer in touch designer. So basically you have two videos and you can mix between each other by simply clicking on uh, your uh, preferred video source. So there is like a list of videos here as operators and by selecting one the video mixer will this patch this touch designer patch will mix into the the one that you just selected so we just fade into the one you just selected something like that cool so we're going to recreate this in max using jitter and science so let's dive into it all right so let's start uh, and the first thing we want to create a jit world because we want to work with um, textures so we need an opengl context that will render those textures uh, let's give it a floating one so the window is always on top uh, let's give it enabled one so it's going to be enabled by default even for scale anti-aliasing although we don't really need it and that's yeah, it for the moment maybe let's set the background as black so we can erase color 0, 0, 0. Whoops, got a 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. All right. Cool. So we want to load a folder with some videos inside. So let's uh, create a drop file object where we can just drag and drop a folder and we will list all the files that are inside this folder with a chooser object. So the chooser object is really cool. It will show us all the items in uh, a list or in a folder that we send it. So if we go into, into inspector and we check the auto populate attribute, now when we send it the prefix message, so we can say prepend prefix, followed by the path of a folder, it will load all the elements in that folder and display them. So I got a folder here with some uh, videos inside. So I will just drag and drop it here. And as you can see, it has been automatically populated with all the elements in that folders. Now, when we click on one of these elements from the second outlet, it will give us the path to that file, which is really cool. If we drop inside another folder, it will just replace the current elements with the, the elements from that folder. So what we need now is definitely a JIT movie object to play those videos, so to read them and to display them. So we want to give it the output texture attribute because as we say, we want to work with textures. This is going to be much more fast and efficient because it's going to use the GPU. Uh, I don't want to hear any volume from the videos, but you could change that if you wish so. And then we can do like this. We can uh, say prepend async read, which is like read the read message. So you will read a movie, but in an unasynchronous way. So it will not block all the other actions that are going on in Max while it loads that video. So we send to the async read, uh, to the prepend object, the path to the video. So now if we connect this to the JIT world, exactly, we can see that as soon as I click on one of these uh, items here, it will load that video and display it. Very nice. Can delete that message box. Cool. But what we want to do is to mix between several videos, right? So we need at least two JIT movie objects because we want to mix between them. So let's do like this. Let's just copy that and create another one. And then we want to do it in a way that when we click on uh, these uh, items here, it will once load it inside one JIT movie, and then when we click the next time, it will load it inside the other JIT movie. Cool, so we basically need to cycle through these two objects. So to do that, we can use a cycle object, which will do exactly that. We'll send the messages uh, first to one outlet and then to the other. So if we do that, we can see, let's connect a couple of message boxes here. And we can see that once it's sent to the first outlet and then it sends to the second outlet. So that's exactly what we want. Great. Uh, so now we want to mix between these two videos, right? To do that, we can use this VZ module, which is very nice. It's called Mix Fader. And not only gives us a crossfade between the two um, inputs, but it also gives us, uh, we can choose in which way they are represented while they are overlapping. For example, we could sum them, we could divide one bit uh, for the other, we could multiply them. Let's, for example, say that we want to sum them. And then if we connect the um, busy module to the JIT world, we can now visualize uh, and we can crossfade between these two video inputs. Very nice. So now what we want to do is just to crossfade between the two inputs every time we click on a different video. 
So in order to mix between the two, we can simply use a line object. We can give it a time interval of uh, 16 milliseconds because we are by default at 60 frames per second. So if we divide one second uh, by 60, we get 16 milliseconds. 16.6 .6 actually or something like that. Yeah, okay. And then we can simply use a message to say, okay, start from zero and go to one in our desired uh, time. So for example, 500 milliseconds. And now you can say from one, go to zero in the same amount. And this we're going to use as the value for the crossfade. So we simply connect it here where it says crossfade. Cool. So we just need to trigger now these change once we select a new video. So we can simply do like this. We can first send the name to the async read uh, message. And then we can simply trigger one of those messages. So let's do the same with the other. And let's see, so now if I click here, we should see that. Let's just, let's connect a couple of GP windows to visualize which videos are appearing where. Cool. So if I now want to visualize the other one, I will click there. And then when I click on a new one, it's going to mixing fading to the next one. Nice. If you want to have a custom fade function, we could use, for example, the function object. That would be very funny. And we can set this domain attribute. So this will be the, um, uh, the time in milliseconds for the fades connect it here and then instead of sending the bang there we send the bangs to the function object which from its second output will output a list that works with line so if we want just a linear fade a linear fade we could do something like that oh but it doesn't work in this case because when you select the other one we actually want to go the other way around from 0 to 1 so we could simply do like this could create a switch object with two input and one, the first one, it's open. And then we say, okay, um, if this, if we send the number one to that, then go from zero to one. And if we send the number two, then go from one to zero. So we just reverse this number that goes between zero and one, the fading, the mixing value. We reverse it and we send it uh, as the second option. So here we should just say, uh, open input uh, two because that's the one that will go from zero from one to zero so we'll uh, visualize the first video and when we go here we should open the input one which will then send the line as it is so we go from zero to one so visualize the second uh, video input okay let's give it a try and seems to be working Nice, let's make the domain a bit shorter, so 500. Uh, you can see that it doesn't clear the um, function object, so we could maybe, every time we change the domain, we could clear it, just to be, just to start from a clean one. Okay. And then we can, I don't know, do something like that, like a zigzag fade, exactly. So it will look something like that. So we can go wild in creating different uh, uh, fading uh, functions here. And I basically think we recreated the touch designer uh, tutorial in a very satisfying uh, manner, I will say. But if you think that's not the case, please let me know and I will uh, look further into this. Cool. So thank you very much for following. You can get this patch from my Patreon and by supporting the channel, you would also get a lot of other patches. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Have fun. See you soon.